leaves tastes good like a beer should. You said it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Try a frosty cold glass of Bavarian right away. What you say? No boulder dash or baloney here. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. No matter how you take your hooch, we've got something ice cold and on tap. Now, serving it to you straight and unfiltered, here are Craig, Scott, and Dan. Yeah. What up? Welcome in, everybody. It's the Unfiltered Gentlemen. Thanks for listening. Thanks for telling your friends about the show. Thanks for drinking along with us. Welcome in. I'm Greg. Over there, that's Scott. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to Masterpiece Theater. <laughs> and that's Dan. Bienvenidos. <laughs> Bienvenidos a todos. Uh, like I said, thanks for listening. Huge shout out to uh, Thousand Oaks. Damn. For topping our listenership, keeping it local nice. this week. Oh, snaps. Yeah, so thanks everybody in TO for, yeah. for listening thanks, along. Thanks, TO. Yeah, I've, I've heard some people say, hey, my friend told me about the show. So uh, thank you to the friend who told the other friend about the show. Keep telling. Yeah, keep it up. Yes. And don't forget to hashtag show us your beers when you're ta- when you're putting your pictures up on the social medias of your beers and tag us and all that good stuff. Rate and subscribe on iTunes and Apple Podcasts. And don't forget our beer science ringtone. It's out there. It's available. If you have an iPhone, just go to the iTunes store, search for beer science. And if you have an Android, do something. I wow. Don't, yeah, it's, yeah. Nobody in this room has an <laughs> why, Android. Why is that? Yeah. <laughs> Reevaluate your life decisions, I guess. <laughs> Uh, oh I think God. if you go to tunes.co, T U U N E S, it's two U's, dot co, you can search for beer science. That's how the Android people oh, do it. Okay. I used to have an Android. Yeah, and uh, you've evolved. <laughs> Slowly but surely. So Indeed, I have. Yeah, somebody had a question. Did you call me bald? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> somebody was asking me about their phone. They were like, hey, can you help me? I was like, oh, yeah. What do you got? Like, oh, it's a Samsung or other. I was like, nothing. I got nothing <laughs> for you, dude. Like, I'm not one of those guys that, like, Floated what you know through phones and then ended <laughs> up at iPhone. Like I had BlackBerry and then I had iPhone. <laughs> I never had a Droid. Yeah, I don't know anything about Droids. Yeah, I so. had one of those flip phones and then just right into an iPhone. So yeah, I had the old school like Nokia one that had Snake on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I went through a couple of flip oh, phones. Oh wow, okay, okay. Yeah, and then I went through a couple of flip phones. God. Then a black couple of Blackberries. And then it's like, fuck this mess. I'm going iPhone. Isn't that crazy how like companies just come and go like that? Like Nokia. Yeah, like or, it was, everyone had a Nokia. Where the fuck are they? Now? Yeah, yeah, really? they're I, only I in Europe now. Yeah, really? Yeah. Well, even Motorola. Like, what was a bigger phone right. than that piece yeah. of shit Razor? Had one of those. Yeah, that's true. I hated the Razor so much, but like Motorola. everybody had it. Everyone had it. That's right. God dang, that was like the iPhone was the Razor. Yeah, it was weird. And then they tried to bring back the Razor a couple of years ago. <laughs> it's like, hey, guess what? Razor sucks. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. So, well, we got it off on a nerd. We sure did. There, <laughs> but, uh, Memories. <laughs> when I had the Android, I didn't know it was an Android. I just, just cheap phone. I was like, yeah, I'll take that one. <laughs> it's got a screen. Yeah. <laughs> well, you had to upgrade because like it wouldn't do the maps or whatever for Uber, right? It, well, because it was yeah, it was, it was, that's why it was so cheap. It's because it was like probably outdated. And yeah. It, yeah, it's really slow and all that kind of stuff. And like somebody owner-like said, oh, phone. you have a smartphone now. I do. Yeah. yeah I didn't know that. Not really. <laughs> so, uh, all right. There's our nerd talk. Yeah. Right there there. You go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening to yeah. Those are tech talks, anyway. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, clearly, we need some beer to, uh, no kidding. to talk about and drink talk about. Talk about good stuff. Yeah, let's, let's get into that. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for beer Drunken of the week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend. And I say, I think I'll have myself a beer. I will indeed. This one comes to us from Asheville. North Carolina, by way of it's the beer girl. Thank you, Dale. Oh, this is you. this is burial, burial, burial. It's hard to say. Burial Beer Company. Oh yeah, it's their death in distance, death in the distance. Wow, it's good oh, stuff. Wow. IPA. <laughs> uh, it is seven point two percent, forty IBUs. Has a four point two five on Beer Advocate and a four point two one on Untapped. From the brewery it says this is a life of unbridled youth. It's an exploration of extravagance, suffering of consequence, and mending of peril. And we meander this path until the day we perish. Made as an homage to our sons with civil, survi- with civil society brewing, dry hopped with citra, summer, white wildtai, I don't remember heard of that one, and double dry hopped with amarillo uh, lupulin powder, which is concentrated hop powder. Oh. So... 
There you have that was a lot of big words for me to say. Uh, what do you guys think of this one? So is the concentrated hot powder what gives it that that uh, you know that kind of uh, New England IPA type chunkiness, no, like the haziness and stuff? No, right. like um, it's the yeast. So they use a, a yeast that doesn't flock always. It kind of stays in suspension. Mm. That's part of it. Um, they won't filter it. That's another part of it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, a, a lot of the, like, when you get the real chunky ones, a lot of Correct. times that can either be, like, yeast that's just hanging around. Oh, okay. Or it's, like, chunks of hops, like little, like, hops have kind of clumped together. Um, but usually it's the yeast. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, the uh, lupulin powder is really cool. Nick at 14 Cannons is using it in a couple of his beers, and it's just... Instead of having to have like all this vegetable material in your beer, you get just the bittering part of it. So you don't actually end up with like the grassy piney notes. You just get that fucking bitter like right up your butthole. Yeah. Ooh, it's like bam. Wow. So Damn, right up your butthole. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cool thing that people are using. Um, this beer, nice and tropical. Mm-hmm. Definitely juicy. Um, yeah, juicy. Pro yeah. show. The smell is a little light to me. But a little tropical on the nose, uh, a little chunky, as we said, as I poured it out, saw some chunks falling down. Definitely hazy. Cannot see through that for anything. Nice. Yeah. A blindingly hazy. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Yeah. That's Put pretty tasty. Put your wipers tasty. on. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, is, uh, that is pretty tasty, It is though. good. I yeah. love the wild attack. Yes. Yeah. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah, really? The wow. Damn. Yeah. That, you got quite the palate there, Scott. Yeah. yeah. Well, you I didn't know. even taste it. I'm a, I'm a beer guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a beer snob over there. Oh, yeah. He can pick that out. No problem. So, oh, man. Thank you to Dale, a.k.a. Yeah. It's the Beer Girl. Make sure you follow it's her on the social media. Social medias. Words are hard. It's going to be a long show, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> follow her on the social medias at It's the Beer Girl. And it's thebeergirl.com. All right. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. My first, my first grievance is my ability to talk, <laughs> or lack thereof. You'd think I was drunk. Maybe the problem is I'm just too sober. Uh, this is my first beer of the day. And really? I, I'm going to have to pound this, I think. Uh, what to talk about? Well, I took my last trip up to Paso Robles for the summer, my last wakeboarding trip before we put the boat up, and of course, stopped by one of my favorites, Earth and Fire, hung out with Nolan. Had some beers. It's so funny. I always go before I'm heading out of town. It's probably like the worst thing you could do before driving three and a half hours. <laughs> go have a couple beers. Uh, but we did that. So that was fun. And uh, he had a couple new ones on tap. He had a new Amber that was really good. And uh, I was at a restaurant the night before and they had a Earth and Fire on tap. I was like, oh, look at him. He's making his way through town. Nice. <laughs> like the village bicycle. Um, <laughs> not quite. So anyways, uh, that was fun. Got to do some uh, last minute wakeboarding as well. I had to talk about this Oktoberfest party. The lady friend and I went to over the weekend. So we were invited, invited wow, by a friend of a friend. <laughs> uh, she, like the friend's like, hey, I'm going to this party. You should come with. And I didn't know the people who were hosting it at all. I didn't know anybody going except for this friend who invited us. And so we went. And it was one of those like, I, I guess I'll go. Like, this, <laughs> this is weird. I'm not even being invited by the person who's throwing the party. It's so we ended up going. And we actually had a lot of fun. That Everyone was supposed to bring like their own beer. And, uh, you know, everybody could try new things a lot, a lot, a lot like, God, God, what I do with my parties where it's like, everybody bring a beer to try. Um, so we got to have some pretty tasty beer. Everyone was pretty well hydrated. There was this girl there that, uh, she was a big girl. And I don't mean that in like a yikes kind of way, but I mean, that in like, she was buff and athletic and we're oh, out. Wow. Yeah. We're out in the garage playing pool and there was a, uh, a punching bag, like a, a oh. hanging, yeah, a hanging heavy bag. And she just started going to town on it. Like oh, she was, man. she was drunk. Oh, and man. was just like hammering on this punch. It bag. sounds like she was big and proud of it. Yeah, like she was ripped. Like She's I like, would. Hey, who wants to punch this bag with me? <laughs> I would not fuck with her yeah. at all. She and she was hilarious, but she starts kicking it so hard that her shoe breaks. And at one point, she kicks it, and like the sole goes flying off across the room. Oh dang! And so then she keeps kicking it with like her broken shoe, and ends up hurting her foot. Yeah. So she puts her foot in the bucket of ice uh, and beer. Uh, Everyone's like grabbing beers out. Like, oh, get these out of here. That's disgusting. Oh, my God. Uh, she's just absolutely hammered. So we finally are like, why is she so much worse than everyone else? And we're all like, I think I was one of the younger people there at the ripe old age of 33. Like Ooh. the hosts were in their 40s. And so like, how old are you? She's like, I'm 24. Uh, I'm like, nope, oh. figured out the problem here. <laughs> Kids. She's trying to keep up with the adults. Oh. And we are just drinking her uh, sweet ass under the table. <laughs> 
It was hilarious. So she, we make our way back in the house. The party kind of moves into the house. We're all hanging out and drinking and talking and whatever. And she lays on the couch and passes the fuck out. <laughs> like we're fucking with her and taking pictures and stuff. She has no idea until someone says, ooh, does anybody want some vodka? And all of a sudden, she perks up like the fucking Undertaker. Wow. Oh. <laughs> and she's rip-roaring ready for some vodka shots. Wow. Which, of course, was a horrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> she she was not going to be deterred from those vodka shots. And she had a couple so yeah, a couple more shots, kind of like went around the room a little bit, then just started like falling over, like couldn't hold <laughs> herself up. Yeah, I was kind of thinking about that, too. Like, she's so big. I wonder if everyone is like, eh, you know, what? don't tell her no, even yeah. though yeah, you right. probably should yeah. tell her no. You're OK. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. I mean, I want to clarify, like big. I mean, correct. Athletic. Yeah. Like, she's yeah, yeah. Ripped. Like I she I kick you. all of our asses. Exactly. And, yeah. And so she starts like stumbling. And finally, we get her back to the couch and is like, all right, just please sit on the couch for a few minutes so we don't have to babysit you and or catch you. And finally she did that. And then, of course, she just immediately clonk, clonks out again and wow. is nowhere to be seen and no one can wake her up. And so then it's time people start filtering out. And she's like, all right, well, I'm going to go now. We're like, oh, no, you are not. <laughs> and so this is where someone had to fight her for her keys. Oh, man. Yeah. She's like, We're just, I'm going to go sleep it off in my car. We're like, how about you just sleep it off yeah, on the couch? And exactly. somebody else offered to take her home. He hadn't been drinking. And uh, <laughs> finally convinced her to go home with the person who hadn't been drinking. And he took her to wherever she was going. But, oh, my God. It was, nice. it was quite the night. It was fucking hilarious she wow. uh, she was the life of the party <laughs> so uh that was our oktoberfest party speaking of oktoberfest we will be at Enegren's oktoberfest this coming weekend saturday 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 doesn't work uh october 6th we start at 11 a.m i believe and the whole thing goes till 10 uh, i'm not sure how long we will be there but we have our, our booth there in the marketplace you can come see the gentleman uh, Dan and I will be the representing. We're going to have some games there. Going to do a uh, a drunk voice booth thing where you come up and you just tell us your your favorite drunk story. We'll record it and we'll get it on the show on a future episode. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, and uh, we're going to be selling some swag. We got some brand new drink local shirts with the uh, the integrant coordinates on them, so you guys can come pick those up. And uh, I'm working on doing some the pretzel necklaces for the giveaway if you come record your drunk story. So still have to figure out if I'm legally allowed to give away food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that could be an issue. I'm working out those details as we speak. But the goal is uh, we'll do some giveaways for your drunk stories in, in exchange for it. And we'll just have games and, and we'll be drinking. And to everyone that comes up and buys us a beer, free high five. Ooh, there you mm -hmm. go. That's got to be worth something, That's right? worth a beer yeah. right yeah. there. Yeah. So please come out October 6th uh, in a grin in Moorpark, California. There's no cost to get in. You just got to pay for your beer and your food and all that good stuff. Uh, they are doing like a commemorative glass and all that. So if you buy the glass, you get like a free fill with it or something like that. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Dan and I were at Freelings Fest, which was the spring version of October oh, Fest. Yeah. <laughs> what they? they had like a log sawing competition, the, the nail zit competition. Where you have to like nail the, the nail into the log with one hand. You get like one strike at it. Uh, Herman the German was great. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope he's there again. Oh, my God. I bet he will be. <laughs> you can't yeah. keep that guy away from a beer. Nope. Either he's there or he died. <laughs> like, that dude was, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's true. He was fairly old. I'm kind of hoping he didn't die. I'm hoping so, too. He was great. <laughs> uh, they'll have German music and, and food and all. It's it's going to be a blast. It's, we're going to be very hydrated. So come out, say hi. Don't die, Herman. Yeah, no. Mm. Come out, say hi. Uh, come get some uh, swag. Come play some games with us and uh, drink some beer with us and all that good stuff. Uh, anybody else have grievances? You know, I think I got a slight grievance. Oh, I guess. Okay, nice. Yeah. Um, you know, the Laker preseason started uh -oh. and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Sunday night was their first game. Right. And, uh, you know, actually I believe October 4th, they're supposed to do a, uh, Lakers, like it's supposed to be like in honor of like, or awareness of like gay pride. Okay. And, um, personally, you know, I don't, I don't really like days like that. I kind of feel like they, they call more attention to different people 
Uh-huh. Like I kind of feel like, you know, I feel like we've all been bullied for some something right. where we were different. And for, in my case, I was a Mexican who didn't know Spanish. <laughs> you know, when that came out, you know, people were like, oh, he doesn't know Spanish. What's well, and, wrong with him? And for some context for people who don't know the area, you lived in a very oh, yeah. Mexican area. So that came out very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. People found that out real fast. You know, speaking Spanish to me, I'm like, what are you saying? And like, oh, no, no, <laughs> it's I'm not like you lived in Connecticut and people found <laughs> yeah. out that you were a Mexican who didn't speak Spanish. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I, I in, in one way. Way, like I could kind of see like it, it's probably not going to be any different from any other Laker game right sure just like if they had a um, Mexicans who don't speak Spanish day I can't like I can't imagine I'm not that much different from you guys <laughs> and, you know I don't know if they're gonna do like chance of that's right or, or something. <laughs> I, I have no idea what would go on at a Mexicans who don't speak Spanish game like I have no idea much the way like I said a gay person probably couldn't tell me what's going to go down that day right um, you know like I, I just feel like you know couldn't there be a place where we, you know, black, white, Mexican, straight, you know, gay, we could all just get together and be united, you know, o- over something that we all share, like like a fucking Laker game. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I kind of feel like, you know, that's the way it should be. You know, like, you know, you could be sitting next to someone and be like, hey, you know, LeBron needs to pick his game up. He's only got, you know, 10 points at half. Like, yeah, this fucking guy, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, oh, we almost got this. And well, what's your name, by the way? My name's Dan. What's your name? Blah, blah, blah. You know? And it just come out naturally. Like, you know, what does this say in Spanish? I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, I don't know Spanish. <laughs> like, I, I can be like, oh, wow, I didn't know that about you. And I can be like, hey, look at that chick over there. Say, like, hey, no, I'd like to suck dick. It's like, I didn't know that about you. That's pretty cool, you know? It's like you, you get to know somebody first, you know? And I, I kind of feel like that's the way it should be. So you like it the old-fashioned way. Yeah, exactly. Getting to like, know people. I, I feel like, you know, having its own day kind of, like I said, just enforces, like, like wow you know these people must really be all bent out of shape of how different i am that i need my own day to show up to a laker game when really it shouldn't be it's no it, it's nowhere close to that you know i feel like as long as you got a laker jersey on everyone yeah. is welcome and i, I kind of felt like it was always that way and i feel like days like that kind of just bring attention the other way it's interesting and i smell what you're cooking mm-hmm. i i guess the problem with that view is we're assuming that everyone is like us and nobody just gives a shit like hey you're gay that's true or you're black or you're whatever you are whatever Mm -hmm. you're happy with whatever you stick your hand and grab whatever in their pants you know like to us it's like we don't we don't care you're just you i i think there's a a relative large part of the community who is not okay with that yeah and i guess it's it's probably just more of an awareness that awareness thing of like hey we can all be basketball fans like that's probably the thought whether whether they pull it off good or not you know who knows but I would imagine the thought behind it is like, hey, we're all just basketball fans no matter what we grab in other people's pants <laughs> or uh, do or don't speak. That that could be. You know, you know I just kind of always felt like that. that's that's the way it was. Like, I always felt like, you know, just the way it's not anybody's business whether I know Spanish or not. It was kind of like, you know, whether someone's gay or straight, that's really nobody's business unless you're willing, you want to share that with somebody. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, and I would imagine as someone who was bullied for their not knowing Spanish, yeah. like you could see that, that end of things of like, oh, bringing attention to this, whether it's a good cause or a bad cause, bringing the attention to this like, could add to the bullying. Right. Where somebody who wasn't bullied is probably like, oh, what do you mean? How could this be bad? <laughs> yeah. So it's an interesting viewpoint. Yeah. And uh, I see what you're saying, and I, and I can see where they're coming from. And yeah. I think in the end, they probably just want to create another jersey so they, so they have something else to sell. I'm sure that's what it's ultimately all about, yeah. really. Is I think Rudy really Gay is going to be there, actually. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> no, uh, if I could see. Is he hosting? <laughs> yeah. But um, seriously, what Dan was saying, I like what Dan said because they're always, you know, you know we, we're we being discriminated against. Not we, but they, I mean... You know, what do you mean, I, you people? I, I am not. <laughs> I'm not gay, but not that there's anything wrong with that. Thanks, Jerry. Um, but I mean, they want to be treated as equals, but then they say, "Well, let's have a special day just for us." Well, I mean, yeah, like that, I said, it just enforces. It's, yeah, it's a conflict. So let's have a white guy, old man, white guy <laughs> day. So you know, I can have my day for once. Uh huh. You know. Um, I'm sure that'll go over real well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> can we have could, white privilege day? Could be my last day on earth. Yeah, you, know, you never know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, but, you know, it's it's just like if you want to be treated as equal, I mean, it's you know, it, it and it should be. And, and I know that there's certain people that have their different ideas about you know different people, which is you know really stupid. Mm-hmm. But if everybody wants to be treated as equals. You know, hey, you know, we're we're gay. Well, that's nice. Who cares? You know, that you know, whatever really? makes you happy, whatever floats your boat. So don't 
draw attention to yourself and say, well, let's have a special day for us because, you know, we're this way or we're that way. Just, you know, have just a day. I, I, I don't know. I just kind of feel like I, I've just grown up with that way. Like, you know, like it's just maybe I'm because I'm so far away from my own culture. Yeah. You know, maybe that's why, like, I can see myself as just a person and I see other people as just people. And I think we as a whole in, in this area of Southern California have grown up with um, – it's just it's normal no matter what you are like nobody Mostly here yeah. yeah nobody for the most part really cares you get a couple little tiny areas around here and there that right are, that are opposite of that but for the most part it seems like nobody really cares everyone's fine with everybody so i've i've had to really kind of realize that like oh we are in like a bubble of acceptance here like you know throughout the country yeah this is yeah, not yeah. the same thing right it, yeah and i and i used to think like why are we having these special days like it, it's so dumb it's they're you know we're everyone's the same but it's yeah and it's it, not a, around the country it, and so i guess what they really should be doing is have like gay days at oklahoma city thunder games you know <laughs> maybe not true. so much <laughs> laker games that's true and you know and, and i think the other thing too where, where scott was trying to say it i, I could see this too where it's like I didn't walk around school with a red shirt saying, like, I don't know Spanish. Right? You know what I mean? Because then, you know, that's, like, really singling me out. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, I think that was something, like, I would share with people, you know, and it was just kind of, like, you know, big deal or whatever because it was not made a big deal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think, like, anybody, whether you're Mexican, black, or whatever, it's like, it doesn't really matter what you are, you know, and there's no real need to cause call attention to it because you're just another person, and that's how yeah. we all are. Especially, like I said, if we're all dressed in Laker jerseys and you got like, your LeBron, I got my Kuzma or whatever, like I don't care what you put in your mouth. Exactly, it doesn't matter. We're all Laker fans. So. Yeah, I, I guess the moral of the story from my end is it's too bad we can't all be like that. That's true. And yeah, so, that's uh, the thing. I mean, it probably will never happen, but no. But go Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry to get all political, people. Yeah. Let's uh let's get back to not being political. How about politically incorrect? Uh old timey word of the week, sauce box. Ooh. Sauce box, which sounds really dirty. Yeah, it's <laughs> like a turned on lady or yeah. something. Yeah. Uh it's a bold or forward person. Wasn't even close. Yeah, yeah. not at all. No. Sauce box. Sauce box. Like someone who talks too much kind of thing. Uh, uh, okay. Does sound pretty dirty though. Yeah, it does. It does. Mm-hmm. Although a box can be a mouth. <laughs> That is true. Yeah, and the sauce, being saucy can be kind of like, you right, know. Right, yeah. Too much sauce. Yep, yeah, totally. Sauce box. Yep, so, there it is. Break it down. Yeah, we've just done the math on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, broke it down. Time, you broke it down for yeah. us rather really well. Most yeah. of the time, they don't make any sense. <laughs> you know, like bubs. That is true. Like, what the fuck? We bubs? <laughs> How do we settle on bubs instead yeah. of boobs? <laughs> yeah, it's not like one was shorter than the other. Yeah. Like, to say it out loud, bubs and boobs are still the same. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah it's sauce, but I don't know. People of back then were weird. I like sauce box. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I wish it meant something else, but you know. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's let's class things up over here. There's nothing better than a babe with craft beer. It's time for Beer Babe of the Week. It is indeed. Uh, her name was not on her Instagram profile. How dare she? But you can find her at... Hoppy, sorry Scott, underscore oh. wife. <laughs> of, of course. Yeah, Hoppy wife yeah. with an underscore. Anything with wife connected to it oh, has God. me confusing. Oh, God. Uh, down there on the Instagrams at Hoppy wife. She's drinking. I can't quite read the can, but it is a nice can. So it's yes, a it is. hashtag can for, cans for cans. Um, but make sure you're following her at Hoppy underscore wife. I think you'll be uh, pretty glad that you did. Hoppy I know. Wife. Right? Hoppy wife. Hmm. Is that like hoppy wife, hoppy life? I wish. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your wife who doesn't drink. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on trying. <laughs> All right, we haven't done this in a while. And now, the sports. Brought to you by cleaninguptheglass.com. Whether it's the Baltimore chop or the one-two punch, it's time for sports. I have to say, I'm so excited. I got to watch my first full day of football a couple days ago. Like, all of last year, I missed basically, like, the entire season with moving and working on the house, and then I didn't start watching until the playoffs. <laughs> I haven't been able to watch this year at all. And then finally, week four was my week. I got drunk, and I watched all day Sunday. In fact, when I was done getting drunk and watching football, I got a little stoned afterwards. Oh, wow, look at you. <laughs> I just fucking topped it off. It was, nice. a, it was a great yeah. Sunday of football. So uh, was, Sunday fun day. Yeah, it, it really was. That was, that was exciting. Uh, speaking of football, Earl Thomas 
flips off his own team as he's car- carted off the field. Oops. Apparently, he's not happy with his team of the Seahawks, which they're the Seahawks. Who would be happy about them? Um, but when he broke his leg, basically, he was carted off and started flipping off his sidelines. <laughs> I thought they, he was saying we're number one. Maybe. Right. Maybe, which is so not true. Yeah. Uh, when they asked Pete Carroll about it, he said, oh, I didn't I didn't see any. You know, it's a big stadium. Yeah, and Pete Carroll. It could have been directed towards wow. anybody. It's like, no, I'm pretty sure it's directed towards you, Pete. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Pete, yeah. You don't see much, do you, Pete? <laughs> yeah. Especially what's going on in the field. Yeah, okay. You don't see that huge back waiting to make a touchdown in your Super Bowl. Anyway. Oh, yeah. A couple years ago. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Timely. Yes, indeed. Timely yes, reference. indeed. Yes. Never uh, forget. Only yeah. Seattle fans. <laughs> only Se- never only, <laughs> wow, I can't talk either. Only Seattle fans remember that. Yeah. And I'm not a Seattle fan. Nope. But I remember it. Um, Sunday night football ratings were down 10% over previous weeks this year. Ravens versus Steelers. Oh, there you go. I watched it. Wasn't a great game. Right. Not really. Yeah. I mean, you could tell right from the get-go. It's like two snoozers right there, man. Right. Like, neither of those teams are playing any good. I understand it's a divisional game, but when the division sucks ass, nobody wants to watch. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't remember much about it. No, I was pretty heavily yeah, hydrated. Because I, I, I was drinking. And, you know. Yeah. I was I was pretty hydrated by that point, which yeah. was nice. Um, but yeah, that, that game, I watched it, and it was just whatever. I, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Uh, basketball talk. Lamelo Ball was ejected from a game in Luth- Luthian- Luth- <laughs> Luthania. Over Lithuania. There. That too, <laughs> Lithuania. After slapping an, impo- an opponent oh. in the uh, JBA league, which is the league his dad owns. Oh really? Oh really? Yeah. But he slapped an he opponent. Got ejected from his dad's league. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Slapped him right in the face. Oh man. Yeah, I got to be honest. I didn't know that the JBA was playing in Lithuania. I didn't even know what the JBA was. Oh, okay. Well, I, <laughs> yeah. there was a JBA. I, I know they tried playing in Lithuania, and then he's, oh, I'm going to do my own league. But I thought it was like in the States. I didn't know it was still in Lithuania. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just traveling or something. Maybe it could be yeah. all over the place. Could be. It's a big baller brand, baby. That's right. They go where they want. I'm sure they do. I do what I want. I think <laughs> the guy tried to steal his sunglasses while oh. I slapped him. Is that why? Mm. That's what I heard. Oh. <laughs> We're on the street. Mm. Wasn't maybe. that the other one? I know that's... Uh, oh, was it? How many kids has he got? There's only well, there's three that three of them right, really yeah. knows about. Which one? Which one stole the sunglasses? That didn't matter. Wasn't that was Leangelo? Oh yeah, the other oh, is the one that had right. that big fro and then shaved it recently. Oh okay. Oh there you go. Yeah, and now he looks like Napoleon Dynamite, but <laughs> mixed with Jason Tatum, maybe. <laughs> maybe he walked up to the guy. I was like, "What the five fingers say to the face?" <laughs> yeah. Slap. Charlie, my freaking man. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Get your dinner. <laughs> Uh, Kyrie Irving is now apologizing, especially to teachers, about the flat <laughs> earth comments that he made a couple of years back. Oh, my God. He basically said, like, he didn't realize that it was going to cause so much controversy, and he was really into, uh, con- not controversies, but, like, uh, that kind of stuff at the time. Was yeah. Listening to a lot of podcasts and watching a lot of YouTube videos about him, and so he just made the statement, but didn't know how widely accepted or, or listened to it would be. And he said teachers were coming up to him like, thanks, and i got to reteach my whole curriculum <laughs> and give him shit. It's like, well, first of all, what do you think was going to happen? You're a public person saying something really stupid. At the very least, right. we're all going to fucking make fun of you for it. Right. But, uh, but yeah, so now he's apologizing for it. But I get what he's saying, man. It's like, it's, it's really interesting. Like the way the backlash that he got, it's like, no, no, no. Like if you really follow that line of thinking and that, you know, somebody's trying to tell you something and you have to believe it, whether it's true or not. You know, for him to say that and the backlash he got about it, like, oh, no, how dare you say that it's flat because it is most certainly round. You know what I mean? And it's like, whoa, wow, okay, you know, it's round then. Jesus Christ. Like, Which is, yeah. It's one of those really stupid things. We're like, we know it's round. We, right. We can see. You can see the earth. There's pictures of it. There's videos of it. That they've shown us. You're right. <laughs> you know what I mean? We haven't actually seen I it. I get yeah. that side. I get it. You know, the, the crab people have been showing us the round thing. That's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what you're telling me. Meanwhile, in the Illuminati. Yeah. <laughs> Come we need to rent a spaceship and go up and check it out ourselves. <laughs> right? I, I think so. Can someone yeah. help us out with that? Like, shit, yeah. it is flat. And then we're dead. Somebody just fucking missiles yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Lance Bass could hook us up with a trip to space. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That would, that would be good. We need, to, we need to figure this out. That's yeah. just the government's way of probably killing him. Yeah, <laughs> like well, finally we can get them all alone in the ship and just blow it up. <laughs> no more insane. Oh man, yeah, it's very flat Earth today. It is, yeah, <laughs> all controversial. I know. Shit. So uh, good job, Kyrie. <laughs> uh, and LeBron played his first game with the Lakers. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, nine points. Yeah, woo woo. What did he play like five minutes? Yeah, something oh, like that. He played like part of the first and part of the second. 
Yeah, you got to put them in for a couple minutes just to sell tickets. Yeah, yeah, that's what they came for. Yeah, we saw the old Lakers last year. We want to see them again. Right? Please, never again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I got an ESPN alert last week, which was interesting. And, and Scott and I were talking about this before we went on the show. Is oh yeah, it was like uh, LeBron to sit down and discuss with Luke Walton and Magic Johnson whether he'll play in in preseason opener. Oh my god! <laughs> like, first of all, why is this news? Second, right. Second of all. Who's the coach? Oh, my God. Right. Clearly, it's LeBron. That's you typical know? ESPN with it, it, LeBron. Exactly. Yeah, they, you know, they LeBron just, you know, sneeze, it, and so it's on ESPN. And yeah. it's very interesting. Like, you know, I, I used to think, like, fuck LeBron. You know what I mean? Like, why does this news come out? Why is he putting out? But you know what? I kind of felt bad for him. It seems like he's going crazy on the L.A. reporters already. Like, they're asking him stupid questions, yeah. and he's just, like, getting very short and very, like, he's, I've been wearing six my pra- for practice, like, my whole career or for the last eight years, you guys just barely found that out about me and they're all like all quiet now Ooh, what do we say about that and it's like well just put it out his news anyways you know what i mean it's like he's turning into popovich yeah like they're pissing him off it's like i wonder if he's gonna terminate his contract yeah. early. Just get me the fuck out of here these yeah. people are crazy these people hate me and they're yeah. dumb uh yeah we'll see what happens i <laughs> look i'm not gonna get into it we've, we've got into it <laughs> yeah he's not the savior of la and that's all I'm going to say. Gay Pride on October 4th. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Go buy LeBron's rainbow jersey. Yeah, that's right. Uh, all right. We got some bullpen beer to get to as well as some news. Why don't you gentlemen grab these delicious, tasty beverages oh. over here? Don't mind if I do. Yeah, and I'll start us off with a little bit of news first. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. It is time indeed. Uh, a couple things to mention. Last week was GABF, Great American Beer Festival, and some local favorites won some pretty cool medals, so I wanted to talk about that. Ennegrin won bronze oh. for their Nighthawk, the dark lager, which is my favorite Ennegrin, Ennegrin beer, so I was very excited for that. Uh, and Epic, who was just on the show a few weeks back, they won a gold for their uh, Z- Zwickle beer, so that was cool. Um, also, Fig Mountain, another local one, just fucking went crazy, won a bunch of gold medals while they were there. They're just like, I see all your other gold, and I raise you a bunch more. <laughs> uh, they won gold for Davy Brown Ale, which is one of my favorites, uh, bronze for Figtoberfest, their German style Oktoberfest, and bronze for Hoppy Poppy, their English style India Pale Ale. Um, they're just winning like crazy. They also won at the World Beer Cup a few months back, gold for Dunkled in My Pants, silver for Stage Coast Out, <laughs> and that. silver for Red Rock Imperial uh, Red Ale. I wanted to, I didn't want to go through all the results because that would just take forever. There's hundreds and hundreds of winners. But I did want to bring up the fact that there was a new uh, category this year, and that was the Hazies. Hazies are now official category at GABF, so I thought I'd go through those winners. Uh, the winners for Juicy or Hazy Imperial or Double IPA. Um, gold went to Black Market Brewing in Temecula for their New England style double IPA. Silver went to Quarter Brewery in Chicago for their Color of Life. And bronze went to Alvarado Street Brewery for Contains No Juice. Uh, juicy or Hazy IPA. Gold went to Alarmist Brewing in Chicago for Le Juice. Silver went to Cross Strain Brewing in La Vista for Fairy Nectar London Double Dry Hopped. It's quite the name. And bronze went to Eris Brewery and Cider House in Chicago for Foyken Haze. Foyken. Oh, I thought you said <laughs> oh, something man. else there. Foyken Haze. <laughs> uh, and finally, Juicier Hazy Pale Ale. Uh, the gold went to one of our uh, favorites, Tin Roof Brewing in Baton Rouge, Louisiana for Voodoo. Uh, silver went to Kings Brewing in Rancho Cucamonga. I didn't even know that it was existing <laughs> in Rancho Cucamonga for Sipping on Dank 2.0. And bronze for the Juicy or Hazy Pale went to Fiction Beer Company in Denver for Madam Psychosis. So I just thought I'd mention those because uh, it's a new category and everyone was waiting to see what would happen with that. This new category is kind of going to define how they, you know, put an actual style guideline behind the Hazies. So. Uh, we'll see how that continues to evolve over time. We all know, well, at least people that know me, know that I'm a fucking weirdo, and I love trains, and I also love beer. So if anybody's in Ohio this weekend, there's a beer train. Oh, man. I was like, shit, I need to get to Ohio. Uh, it's Hoppin' Frog's Beer Train. It's on October 5th at uh, 7.30. It's 50 to 60 bucks to get on. So if you're in the area of uh, Akron, 
Maybe LeBron will be there. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Uh, you should do the Hop and Frog beer train. I've I've had a bunch of Hop and Frog beers. Really good stuff. So hmm. uh, train plus good beer can't go wrong. There you go. Just had to bring that up because I'm a nerd. That's true. That, that train the truth. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that too. But no, yeah. Train plus beer can't go wrong. That's right. That's a little engine that could right. There. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. You guys ready to call the pen? Sure yeah. Enough. Yes. Yeah. Let's freaking do it. Let's Foyt can do it. <laughs> he calls to the bullpen for beer. Yes, he does. This one was presented to us by the one and only Dan. Wow. Boom. This is Lost Coast Brewing's Fog Cutter Double IPA. 8.7%. 80 IBUs. Oh, snaps. It's got 3.82 on Beer Advocate and a 3.8 on Untapped. So very uh, consistent there. From Lost Coast, they say Fog Cutter is our first true double IPA, and it's quite the work of art. Yeah, it's bitter, but it's supposed to be. And the variety of malt flavors and aroma help balance it all out, as any good double IPA deserves. The bright, citrusy nose is born from the extra dry hop from Cascade, Centennial, Crystal, and Chinook, and Citra hops. So there you have it, Fog Cutter double ipa yeah, and i had to look at the bottle again i was like oh, i remember buying you now it was like, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like it's got like the ghost rider on the front kind of but like right. except with his head on fire he's like covering it up with a like a brain bucket it looks like so a brain bucket yeah yeah so if he's riding a motorcycle very nice very nice artwork yeah getting to the beer now yeah oh yeah there's beer too <laughs> yeah you know on the nose uh, it's it's a little dank has a lighter smell for me but my nose is also not the best in the world uh on the the palate, I just get like dank and pine, and like they said, it's bitter and it's supposed to be. It just it tastes like a classic old school San Diego, even though Lost Coast is up north. San Diego style double IPA, hoppy yeah. in your face kind of. That's what I like. That's what I like about the double IPAs. You get that mouthfeel in there, and uh, it's very uh, malty yeah. too, is the taste. And uh, I don't know, man. Sometimes like I like to drink a beer and feel like I'm having a meal, and uh, <laughs> that's what I'm kind of getting with this, dude. It's like a protein shake, yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. Except it gets you drunk. Yeah. <laughs> It's good after a workout. Yeah, it is. Yes. That's like uh, the triple IPA from Renegade. Uh, Brian was saying it, it's his favorite to have after he throws his back out lifting kegs. <laughs> oh, <fuck. Yeah. laughs> it's just easy to drink, yeah. but a lot of booze. Numbs the pain. Yes, indeed. Scott, thoughts? Do we like? Yeah, it's a very, yeah, excellent beer. Very excellent. Very indeed. excellent. Yeah, it's bitter. Uh-huh. And if you don't like beer, then fog you. Yeah, ho. <laughs> hey. hey oh. Scott coming with the funnies there. Love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, back to the news. Uh, Pipeworks Brewing. If it, has anybody ever had Pipeworks Brewing Company? I have not. Mm-mm. Um, I can recall. Okay, good. Speaking of recall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Pipeworks Brewing issues a recall Uh-oh. on 2018 barrel-aged Murderous and their variants. Um, they say through our quality control testing, we detected flavors in all three variants of recent released batches of barrel aged murderous barley wine that are incon- inconsistent with the flavor of the beer when it was originally packaged. Uh oh. Yeah, so it's not good. Basically, uh, if you have one of these beers, do contact them. They will swap it out for you. Oh, <laughs> oh damn. Yes. What's the number? <laughs> yeah, I got 10 of these bottles. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Do we see a receipt? Oh, I, uh, I lost it. I lost it yeah. somewhere. So uh, I think I ate it after oh, I drank much weird, drop them weird all. flavored beers. Yeah. <laughs> I got the shits from all your weird, weird flavored beers. <laughs> you so. got the shits. <laughs> yeah. Green so. apple splatters. <laughs> <laughs> got the squeegee shits. Oh, God. That is rough. Uh, new Jersey, the ABC there in, in New Jersey, imposes new rules and regulations on breweries, making it even dumber to have a brewery in New Jersey. Uh, and a blow to small New Jersey breweries, regulators from the Division of Alcohol Beverage C- uh, Control have issued a special ruling that restricts the number of special events a beer company can host annually, among other re- regulations, according to media reports. Announced Monday, the new ruling restricts breweries to hosting 25 special events, events Wow, <laughs> such as trivia and live music nights, and limits the number of special off-premises uh, sales permits to 12 per year. Um, breweries will also now only be able to host 52 private parties annually. So, like a lot of the breweries out here, at least, do weekly trivia nights and, and weekly you know karaoke or whatever. Like, it seems like every night of the week is a different event. Uh, if you're in New Jersey, you can only do 25 for the year. So, no more weekly anything with that. Yeah, kind of stop having fun, New Jersey. That's what it seems like. Man. <laughs> it's really dumb. 
Uh, and they also changed it so that uh, they can now serve like food in the in the brews, like sodas and or not sodas, but like snacks and stuff. But because of that, you can't bring in a food truck. Now it's so weird. Oh come on! It's like why are you not wanting us to pay us as if I'm a brewer in New Jersey? <laughs> yeah. Pay me your money, You're right? But why why wouldn't you as the government just want the brewers to make as much money as possible so that they can then pay as much taxes yeah. as possible? I just don't understand the thought behind this. So. Uh, and finally, in the spirit of everything being raped by a pumpkin at fall time, <laughs> it's happening. IHOP has produced a pancake pumpkin stout in conjunction with Keegan oh, Ales. Yes, they will not be serving them at IHOP because there's no booze at IHOP. Oh fuck, you're there's right. Not, yeah, there's. No, I guess no. Not. That's where you get to heal up from it booze. Used to be. Yeah, that's that where you, Denny's. That's where you sop it up, and then yeah. you go. <laughs> I, I have heard of a couple of special, a special Denny's that have beer somebody was telling really? me like i don't know if they still exist or if this is like you know a story from the 60s or something damn but um but yeah no no booze at the ihops they used to have beer really yeah oh maybe some do some i mean this is years ago maybe yeah maybe they stopped and and denny's yeah. too really yeah I, I mean, i've never seen alcohol at denny's really i mean years ago me and a friend of mine went to denny's and got pretty hydrated yes <laughs> and then went to watch a some friends play softball and almost got thrown out of the park. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Were you My going? friend, not me. Right, of course. Yeah. You're always in control. Yes, I was very, <laughs> very calm. Yeah. So I seen a billboard like that was like, you know, fake phony billboards and it was for Denny's. Uh-huh. And it said like, it's 3 a.m. Nothing else is opened. You're stoned. Come on in. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's pretty much true. Denny's right there. <laughs> was it really a Denny's billboard? And no, it wasn't. They like made it, you know, like they made it like a meme or whatever. They, oh, they okay. fiddled around with it. I was like, because, I mean, really. That should be it. That should be their slogan. Yeah. You're stoned. Come to Denny's. Yeah. Like either it, you're stoned or it's a holiday and everything else is closed. Yeah, exactly. You know, on the weekends, I do in my Uber. I do get a lot of deliveries from Denny's early really? in the morning. Yeah. Why? They're it's stoned. So, I guess. But yeah. like, what? But I mean, you can order anything, though. Yeah, that's what I'm well, thinking. It's open, though. Oh, oh, that's true. Oh, you're talking like, like four, four in the, in the oh, morning. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. It, it's Denny's or Del Taco at right. that point. Oof. Later, it's McDonald's. Yeah, a little bit. Well, some McDonald's are 24 hours now. Uh, yeah, the, you know, yeah, the drive through I mean, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I get some early morning McDonald's, but I get a lot of Denny's. Yeah, I guess if you're stoned and you just want like pancakes... Like, I love waffles. I can imagine oh, yeah? getting super stoned and right. just eating the shit out of some waffles. Not, not being able to make them yourself anymore. <laughs> yeah. So I'm out of eggs, man. Yeah. I fucked I, it up. I dropped them all on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the other night, I had, like, a shit ton of ice cream and, like, half a jar of peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, randomly like that? Yeah, I just, just got a little baked. Oh, there you yeah, go. That'll happen. Sounds I hadn't like, done it in, like, months and months like and months. Meal. Yeah, it was it was healthy. That was dinner for me. You know, it's funny. Like, you know, someone watching me would think I have the munchies, but most of the time I'm just saying, like, I was like, I don't get it. Like, does food taste better, like, when you're stoned? Like, I got to find out. So I'm just, like, eating stuff to find out. <laughs> and then I find out, like, science. No, it doesn't yeah. taste any better because you forget what you eat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I was like, what the fuck? Did I, just, I just ate a whole bag of Doritos. I don't remember that. Like... <laughs> I don't remember tasting any better because yeah. I don't remember shit. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know about you guys. Like, I don't, you know, some people just get the munchies where they just want to eat everything. Right. I less get that. I more get like very, uh, like specified munchies. Like, oh, God damn, I really want, you know, whatever, like some peanut butter and ice cream it's right like, now. It's like pregnant Dr- Greg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with some pickles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I get pregnant all of a sudden. I turn yeah. into a fucking seahorse. <laughs> And I just, I but I want something very specific. I don't just want to like raid the cupboard and eat everything I have. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, interesting. And it's usually things that I love. Like I, I, ice cream is my favorite thing in the world. Oh, okay. And I went through a lot of ice cream the other night. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I don't know. Everyone at home is like, all right, we don't care. <laughs> Thanks for your stone stories. Come on, you can relate, guys. <laughs> yeah, everybody can relate. Come on, stoners. Yeah, you fucking That's right. stoners. Send us your stories. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe when, well, instead of a beer of the day, we'll have like a weed of the day. <laughs> That'd be the worst show ever. Wow. <laughs> Blueberry haze. <laughs> Whoa, man. <laughs> How does it taste? How does what taste, man? <laughs> the weed, dude. <laughs> oh. 
That would be so horrible. Oh, man. Uh, today's we the day, Sour D. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, that'd be awful. But if you guys have funny stunner stories, we'll tell yeah, them. We'll please. Tell the same story like 10 times. <laughs> yeah. Show's over. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, man. Oh, Speaking of show being over, show's over. <laughs> uh, you guys, don't forget to get the ringtone and come see us this weekend at Integrin's Oktoberfest, Moore Park, California. It's October 6th, Saturday, 11 a.m., Till they close, I'll be there for a good portion of that. Definitely starting at 11 a.m. because, you know, otherwise I'd be late. Yeah. Uh, find us at theunfilteredgentleman.com, facebook.com, and Instagram as well, the Unfiltered Gentleman. Twitter, at Unfiltered yeah. Gents. Don't drink and drive. Don't drink it. Get an Uber and listen to jazz. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, dig some jazz. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll be digging some jazz on Saturday. <laughs> the preferred music of real men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That is true. <laughs> uh, get out those brass <laughs> instruments. Uh, what else? 805-538-BEER-2337. If you can't make it to Oktoberfest and you want to share a drunk story, leave it as a uh, voicemail. We'll put it on the air for you. So I think that's everything. I hope everybody is staying hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. Good night.